Before we delve too deeply into all the intricacies and technicalities and tactics of day game, I want to give you sort of a general overview of some of the characteristics that women find attractive in a man in general. Uh, when you understand these characteristics, all the other techniques and tactics in this entire course are going to make a lot more sense to you because you'll understand that what you're essentially doing every single step of the way is conveying these characteristics. Okay. Also, whenever you don't have a tactic or technique in place, uh, if you have in mind the idea you're conveying these things, you'll, you may stumble and bumble around, but at least you'll stumble and bumble around in generally the right direction and with generally the right ideas in mind. Okay. So without further ado, what are the characteristics of an attractive man? Number one, abundance. The attractive man conveys that he has other women available to him. Now this may seem ironic because as a man we think that you know a woman, a woman being with a lot of men is kind of an unattractive thing, but it's actually the opposite for a man. Think about it this way. If a man has been with a lot of women, that means a lot of women have decided he was a good choice. That means that for the woman in question, she can choose him with a little more confidence. Right? She can choose him with less chance of making an error because all these other women have gone first. All these other women have said, oh, I like him based on the information. Well, the more women that have said yes, the more women who have liked the package presented, the more likely it actually is a good package. And the reason for this is men lie. Right? Men can say anything, do anything, convey anything over a short period of time, and they may dupe the woman. But the proof of having other women into him is something he can't lie about. It's what we call an honest signal. All right, so abundance is huge. And abundance is conveyed through things like, um, for example, when a girl texts you, do you text back like right the next second? Or do you, you know, you're busy doing, you know, going about your life, you text back a few hours later, and you know, it looks like you have other things going on, which ideally you probably should have other things going on. Um, it can be conveyed directly through, you know, other girls calling you, other girls coming up and saying hi, or just when you're out, other girls smiling at the both of you and clearly liking you, those kind of things. It also can be conveyed by you not being nervous around her, um, it can be conveyed by when she gets out of line, you're willing to let her walk away, you're not super needy to cling to her when she's misbehaving. All kinds of things like that can convey that level of abundance. But understand that fundamentally, if you are in demand, if other women like you, that is attractive to women because it is an honest signal that you've been a good choice. Next characteristic that's highly attractive to women is entitlement and assertiveness. Okay? This basically means standing up for yourself and believing you deserve things in life. Uh, and what this does, first of all, it indicates to her that you can handle yourself in the world, right? If you don't ask for what you want and you don't get what you want, you're not a very good provider. You're not a very good, successful man of the world. But it even goes deeper than that, which is when you convey that you're entitled to things, when you're willing to assert yourself, you're willing to disagree with people, you're willing to stand up for yourself, it conveys that in the past when you've done that, you've received a positive response. You've received good feedback from the world. And so that means that you've lived a good life, um, people have liked you. Again, it's implying social proof, not just from women, but from men overall. Okay, so being willing to stand up for yourself, being willing to talk in a loud tone of voice, um, being willing to say your opinion even when it's unpopular, being willing to be the center of attention. All of these things are highly, highly, highly attractive qualities. And if you convey them, women are going to get aroused by you, turned on very, very quickly. Third characteristic, we talked about it already a little bit in the first two characteristics, is social proof. Right? Are you a celebrity? That's great. Are you popular in your social circle? Also great. Um, do, you know, when you talk to people, do they respond well to you or not? Like say you're out on a date with a girl and everybody throughout the entire date like treats you rudely and tries to like walk all over you. Even if you're having a good conversation with the girl on the date, she's going to notice that. She's going to respond. She's like, ooh, who is this scrub that I'm with? All right? Um, are you well dressed? If you're dressed well, if you're dressed in ways that, that convey that you've made enough money to buy those clothes, or um, in a way that like you're stylish enough that you're you know being willing to have some attention on you, that conveys that you've had good social feedback throughout your life. Anything and everything that conveys good social feedback again is going to make you more attractive. We kind of talked about that in the other two points, but it's important to even just outline it explicitly because it is so 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 powerful and so 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 important. The next traits I'm going to talk to you about are starting to delve not just into who you are as a person, but into how you interact with women and with that specific woman. And the first of those is leading. All right? Women are in an interesting position when it comes to sex, because women want sex, and they like sex, probably more than men. If you've ever had good sex with a girl and heard the way she moans and the fact that she can have multiple orgasms and that kind of stuff, you'll know that sex can be amazing for a girl. And you might think to yourself, why doesn't she want sex all the time? And she probably does. The problem is, Women are judged for wanting sex. Women are called things like slut or whore or things like that. 
And so it makes it very difficult for them to pursue these sexual desires. It also means that in a context of a man-woman situation, the woman's very unlikely to make a move. The woman's very likely to, or very unlikely to, to step up and like take a risk, right? Because she doesn't want to be perceived as a slutty or in a, in a way that will reduce her social value. So it's very important as a man that you be willing to lead because if you don't lead things forward, things won't happen. All right? It's very important that you take the burden off of her shoulders so she can have a good experience where it just happened. Okay, that phrase, it just happened, is so, so, so critical. It just happened means she wasn't at fault. She didn't have to be a slut. If she gets to have sex without having to be judged, without having to be slutty, that's amazing for her. If she has to be slutty and has to be judged and has to possibly incur negative social repercussions for sex, she's not going to have sex very often. Um, also, as a side note, this leadership thing, it does convey more entitlement, more assertiveness, so that makes it even more attractive as well. Last trait I'm going to mention to you that's very, very attractive to a woman is sort of an, what I call knowing the dance. Knowing the dance of seduction, knowing the process of seducing a woman, knowing the way how to touch her in the right way, knowing how to take a girl from meeting her to going on a date with her or taking her straight home um, to getting back to your place to taking things at, at the right pace and rhythm, um, using humor when you maybe, if you push too far, knowing how to back off, keep it fun, keep it funny so it doesn't become a big deal. All those sorts of things. Knowing how to flirt, acting, you know, conveying that you've been there before. This is very, very positive and very, very arousing to a girl. Um, number one, because physically it is a better experience for her. If she's touched in a better way, that's a better experience. If you're being more interesting conversationally, that's a better experience. So it is per se better. But again, also, you're conveying social proof. You're making her more comfortable in her choice. If you, you know, say she thinks you're this really cool guy, uh, you get her back to your place, and then you go touch her, and you have like, like no finesse, and you're like very try hard. And all of a sudden, she's like, wait, was I wrong? Was he not such a cool guy? Because if he was a cool guy, he probably would have been with a lot of girls. And if he's been with a lot of girls, he probably would know how to be better in bed. So what's going on here, right? So number one, being better in bed is good because you're just better in bed. But it also conveys a lot of good things about you. The other part of this, and I mentioned this a little bit before, is avoiding the pitfalls. Avoiding things like um, little things. Like if you say to a girl, I want to go back to my place, that phrase might make her feel slutty. Whereas instead, if you're like, you know what? I'm really enjoying hanging out with you. I would love to have one more drink with you in a place that's a little quieter and we can really get to know each other. That sort of thing, because you didn't say my place, because you didn't imply that you're going somewhere where you can have sex or God, God forbid, my bedroom, right? Um, if you avoid saying those kind of things, you understand her psychology, you understand how to allow her to have a good experience without being slutty. Again, one, it enhances the experience for her, but two, it conveys you've been there before, it conveys you've had positive feedback, and that makes her more comfortable, more secure in her decision, okay? So understand how all these characteristics of an attractive man, they're really coming back to showing that you've had women before, showing that you've been attractive, and showing that you're that type of guy, all right? So throughout this entire course, every single technique we're gonna talk about, it all comes back to that. It all comes back to conveying these attractive qualities in sometimes very overt ways, sometimes very subtle ways, um, but that's what it's all about. So now that we've talked in general about the characteristics that a woman is looking for and what is attractive, how can we display these characteristics? What behaviors can we employ to get those across? The first one I want to talk to you about is something we call self-amusement. Anything you say can kind of come from one of two places. It can come from a place of I'm trying to get a reaction from her or I'm enjoying this for its own sake and I'm present kind of in the moment creating my own party. Whenever you're creating your own party and not caring too much about how she responds to it, that conveys a massive amount of abundance, right? So whenever you're going in and just saying what you want to say, then you'll tend to do really, really well. As soon as you're thinking, will this work? Will this get a reaction? Uh, does she like me? As soon as those kind of thoughts are in your head, you're automatically coming from a place of scarcity, a place of neediness. And even if the things you say are good, even if you are thinking like, will this make her like me? And because of that, you say something that technically should be good game, the fact that you're thinking about it in terms of having her like you is going to make it bad game. Generally, it's much better to say the wrong thing from the right place and the right attitude than it is to say the right thing with the wrong reasons behind it and the wrong beliefs behind it, okay? So this idea of self-amusement, this idea that you wanna go in and genuinely enjoy the conversation for its own sake and say what you feel like saying and what you want to say rather than what you think will get a reaction, ironically, is gonna be the thing that will get you the best reaction. Second thing I wanna to talk to you about 
is what we call intent or being man to woman. One of the biggest mistakes I see guys make in game is they have what I call the half hour conversation to nowhere. Essentially, they go in and they start talking to the girl and they'll talk about the weather or sports or uh, their job or mm, who knows, whatever, whatever random thing. And it doesn't become about them and the woman on any level. And also, they don't bring up the idea of sex and they don't sort of like, even in their bodies, feel sexual in any way. So they're having this very, very platonic, very dry conversation that you could have that conversation for hours or even days with a girl and you would never get into the frame or into the like the situation of being a lover for her. You'd be maybe a friend, um, more likely just like an acquaintance that she had a pleasant conversation with, all right? What you need to have is what we call intent, this desire. Um, one thing that I'll say to students a lot of times is they'll come out of an interaction with a girl and I'll say like, does she know you have a penis? The answer to that question needs to be yes. If you go in and talk to a girl you're attracted to and she doesn't know after the interaction you had a penis, you did something wrong, okay? Um, another friend of mine who's very, very good at game, he likes to joke around and say that he gets a boner in every set, right? And um, you don't have to literally do that, but there's something to that. The fact that he's becoming aroused, the fact that he's feeling sexual, the girl's gonna pick up on that, she's gonna notice that, and that's gonna allow the interaction to become sexual, right? If you don't feel sexual in any way, why would she? It just doesn't make sense. Also, the idea of being willing to, you know, be man to woman and take a risk even when it might not go so well, it implies positive social proof. It implies that when you've done that before, it's been successful. Also, it's a conveyance of entitlement and assurance. So these are all very, very, very attractive qualities that you'll be conveying. So you wanna make sure that in your interactions, you are conveying man to woman. And guess what? A lot of guys are scared to do this, but if you do it, the woman will actually respect you for it. If you don't do it, that's when the woman's gonna hate you, disrespect you, and think of you as less of a man. Another important concept or technique when talking about how to be attractive and how to convey high value qualities as a man is what I like to call the buyer-seller dynamic. And basically what this comes down to is in every interaction, someone's buying and someone's selling. Are you gonna be the buyer or the seller? Typically the frame when a man walks up to an attractive woman is that the man has already decided on the woman and then the woman is making a decision about him. When that's the case, the woman has all the power. The woman's in the position of, I like him, I don't like him, jump through this hoop for me, do this for me. And it's very, very hard to be conveying abundance, conveying high value when you're in that frame. On the other hand, if you're also evaluating the woman, if you're also finding out if she's the type of woman you want, now you're in that frame of buying and you force her to be selling as well, it makes it more of sort of like a level playing field. Um, and that's a much more favorable frame for you to be in. Uh, really advanced guys can actually flip the script completely and they get a situation where the woman is almost fully selling herself to them. And when that's the case, obviously the sky's the limit. Obviously, like, that's a great situation to be in, okay? So uh, I really want you to, to be aware in your interactions of who's buying and who's selling. How are you being try hard? And I want you to be aware also of the idea that just because a woman's attractive doesn't mean she should have you. You should be evaluating her as well. A truly abundant guy has the option of lots and lots of attractive women and he's gonna pick and choose the ones he has the best compatibility with or the ones that impress him the most. So you need to have that present in your interactions, that idea that she needs to impress you too and that she, she's not you know, winning you over just by showing up. Another concept that's extremely important when we talk about being high value and building attractiveness is something I like to call compliance and social capital. Now the idea here is that when you first meet someone, you don't owe them anything, they don't owe you anything. Uh, and that means you don't have a lot of reason to go out of your way for them and they don't have a lot of reason to go out of their way for you. In the case of an attractive girl, when you walk up and talk to her, she doesn't know you yet. She doesn't have a lot of reason to respond um, all that positively to you. Now, she'll give you general social courtesy and if you seem like an attractive guy, you have good body language, good tone of voice, that kind of stuff, she'll respond maybe more positively than negatively, but she's not ready to just like spread her legs for you right there, right? Um, and she's probably not even willing to like, you know, move for you, like go sit down with you or go on a date with you or anything like that. Anything that's going out of her way, she's probably not super ready for. But over time, as she has more experience of positive interaction with you, and also as she said yes to smaller things along the way, she's more and more willing to say yes to those bigger and bigger things. Um, and interestingly enough, every time somebody says yes to something, they have to kind of justify in their head why they did it. And the very fact of saying yes, the very fact of complying to something actually makes them um, more likely to view that person who they complied for in a positive light. 
So for example, if you were talking to a girl and you said, hey, let's go sit over here, and she comes and sits down with you, on a subconscious level, she has to sort of justify why she went and sat down with you, and the justification she's gonna come up with are reasons why you're an attractive person. On the other hand, if you say, hey, come sit down, and she says no, her brain is now gonna start justifying to herself all the reasons she said no, and that's gonna probably involve reasons why you're not such an attractive person. Okay, so it's very important that as the interaction moves forward, you do ask for things and you do get compliance, but that you're asking for things and getting compliance to things you have enough, what I call social capital, enough sort of like positive history in the interaction for her to say yes to, okay? So that's the idea here, is that every time that your social capital is kind of like a bank account, every time that you ask for compliance and don't get it, you spend some of that bank account and then you have less. Every time you ask for compliance and you do get it, now you have more social capital to spend next time. And the other way that you can build the social capital is again through just having a positive interaction in general. The last concept that I want to bring up to you within the scope of being attractive man and being high value is the idea of balancing value and comfort. This is what we call social calibration and it shows that you just have good social skill in general. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that what a woman wants is essentially the guy she doesn't deserve but also the guy she can trust and I mentioned the paradox between the two. So when you're talking to a girl it's important that you find the balance of what she's looking for. If you have conveyed to her a lot of characteristics of that high value guy who doesn't need women, um, but who's not very trustworthy, it might be smart to be a little genuine, get to know the girl, and just spend some time chilling with her and having you know, a very like, calm interaction and letting her get comfortable with you. On the other hand, if the girl seems really comfortable but isn't really responding to you, uh, she seems to think maybe she's higher value than you, she's starting to take the lead instead of having you lead, that kind of stuff, it may be time to do more characteristics of being irreverent, um, standing up for yourself, maybe even like um, teasing her, that kind of stuff, um, things that build more value. So it's very, very important to know where you're at. Uh, that's very important because A, again, it gives her a better experience, but like many of these other traits, the fact that you can give her a better experience actually says to her, you're the right type of guy who it would be smart to sleep with, right? It conveys that you've done well with women and well socially in the past. Okay, so that kind of wraps up the ideas and the behaviors that an attractive man has. I know some of that may seem a little esoteric, that's fine right now. As we go through all the other techniques throughout the entire course, I'm just going to keep coming back to these things, and as you see them as examples over and over and over again, these are going to make total sense in your mind, and more importantly, all the techniques later will make sense based on your understanding of these basic concepts. Here are some at-home exercises you can do to become more attractive. First exercise, very simply what I want you to do is make a list of 10 reasons why you are the best decision a girl can make. Okay, this is not just why you're pretty good or why you're kind of cool, why you're the best decision she can make, why you think you're a badass and she is lucky to be with you. Very, very important. Okay? Now why is this important? There are two reasons. One is you're going to be constantly telling yourself you are enough, you are the prize, she's lucky to be with you, but if you're just like telling yourself that rote, your brain is sitting here thinking, you're bullshitting me. I don't believe you, you're just telling me this to get a result. However, if you have actual reasons why you're the best, the brain wants proof, not promises, right? So if you say, I'm the best because this, I'm the best because I'm working on this area of my life and I have a bright future, I'm the best because I care about giving a girl a good experience, I'm the best because I have this and that talent, whatever it is. If you have tangible reasons why you're the best, your brain will believe it more and it will help you with your inner game. Secondly, this will help you because when you're actually uh, inset with a girl, it's going to give you an idea where to direct the conversation. You can play to your strengths a lot better if you know what your strengths are, okay? So again, the exercise is come up with 10 reasons, write them down, don't just do it in your head, write them down, have a list of why you are the best decision a girl can make. Second exercise, also a list, I want you to come up with five non-physical traits that you would look for in a girl. This is not she has big tits, this is not um, she's wearing very few clothes, okay? Um, these are things you're actually looking for in her personality. Uh, and there's a few reasons for this. The first is that when you are actually looking for things in a girl, that puts you in a different frame of mind. Instead of going into an interaction and thinking, how can I make her like me? How can I prove that unworthy me is worthy of her? Instead you're thinking, how can I find out if she's the right girl for me? It automatically puts you in the position of being the selector, and that is absolutely critical. One of the most important things that's gonna happen in game 
uh, this to your advantage is she starts qualifying herself to you. She starts trying to impress you. And if you start screening her, she's going to start trying to impress you. If you're just chasing her, there's no reason for her to ever start going down that route and she's never going to get invested in the interaction. So that's very important. Uh, similarly also though, like the previous list, having this list is going to help you with what to focus on in game. It's going to give you things to talk about. Say you get to that point in the set where you don't know what to say, having this list of the five things you're looking for is going to help you to know exactly what to say. Okay, so again, the assignment is come up with five things that are non-physical traits that you are looking for in a girl. All right, that's it. Do those assignments, they're critically important. Here are some infield examples for becoming a more attractive man. Now, I say infield, but what I really mean is not necessarily while talking to girls, I mean while going about your life. Okay, so these are things you're gonna do as you go about your day, little things you can do to develop the habit of being a more attractive man. And I suggest you do one of these at a time. Do not try to do all three at once, okay? Each one is going to be hard enough and it's gonna demand a lot of your focus. Also, if you're focused on three things at once, your head's kinda all over the place, okay? So one at a time, maybe pick an hour at a time, a day at a time to do these. Don't get overwhelmed. It doesn't matter that you get everything right away, it matters that you become good over time. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna to suggest to you is what we call the positivity challenge. The way this works is as you go about your day and you may have to do it for just five minutes at a time or maybe an hour or maybe, maybe you're really good and can last a whole day, but it's very difficult. Try and reframe everything as positive. No matter what happens, find the positive in it. You'd be like, my boss yelled at me. Okay, where's the positive in that? It could be, um, that means I have a demanding job and that means I have a lot of job security, right? Or my boss yelled at me, that means he thinks I'm important to the workings of the company and he values the work I do. That means I have an essential role, right? Or it could be my boss yelled at me, um, that means that I'm developing character and I'm becoming a stronger person. You can find something positive in everything or you can find something negative in everything. It just depends where your focus is, okay? So your challenge is pick a selected period of time and through that period of time, you must reframe everything as positive, right? If you catch yourself feeling negative, that's fine. Don't judge yourself. Don't worry about it. Don't be like, I'm a shitty person because I was feeling negative. Just be like, oh, I was feeling negative for a second. All right, time to feel positive again. Let's go and just get right back on that horse, okay? Um, again, if this is really difficult for you, try and be positive for just five minutes. If this is a little bit easier, try and be positive for an hour and try and extend your time. Try and make it a case where you can constantly reframe and you can stay positive at all times if you so desire. Next up we have the don't qualify yourself challenge. This is similar to the positivity challenge in that you're trying to adopt a particular behavior and you're trying to extend over a period of time while keeping that behavior in place. Okay, in this case the behavior we're selecting for is not qualifying yourself. If you don't know, qualifying basically means justifying yourself, trying to prove yourself, trying to change the way that people are perceiving you. It means basically instead of just doing what you know is right, or just living through your belief system, you are actually trying to manage people's perception, you're trying to appear cooler, or you're trying to like appear less weird, that sort of thing. So for example, if um, someone said to me, nice shirt, and I'm like, thanks man, I appreciate it, that's not qualifying myself. If someone said nice shirt, I'm like, oh yeah, it, it was you know laundry day today, and you know I, I sorry, I have other shirts at home, it's, I know it's kind of wrinkled, I didn't have time in the morning. That kind of stuff's qualifying yourself. Also, if someone says nice shirt, you're like, yeah, I know, it's cost like, thousand dollars, I got this at like the most high-end store, that's qualifying yourself too, okay? Anytime you're trying to alter someone's perception, instead of just doing what you know is right and living through your values, that's when you're qualifying yourself. So the key here is try and go through as long a period of time as you can, challenge yourself not to qualify yourself. Lastly, we have the certainty and language challenge. This is all about being on your purpose, being direct, being definite, and being assertive. It's part and parcel to being a leader, really, okay? So this is subtle things. Right, for example, what we wanna do is if someone is asking you a question, instead of saying yeah, today you're gonna to say yes. You're gonna be definitive and assertive. Instead of saying nah or I'm not sure or whatever, you say no, right? Instead of saying maybe, you're gonna make a decision, you're gonna stick with it. Don't worry that you have the exact right decision, just make a decision. Or if you don't know, say I need more time but I'll get right back to you. And be definite and then get back to them with a definite answer. No wishy-washiness, okay, so again, you're gonna try and do this for a period of time. In each of these three drills, we're essentially adopting the behaviors of an attractive alpha male. If you're not qualifying yourself, if you're being certain, if you're being positive, those are characteristics that are going to immediately make you more attractive to women. So there's a benefit right away in adopting them. However, the benefit goes even deeper. When you start adopting those behaviors, you're going to psychologically become the type of man who adopts those behaviors, and that's gonna permeate all areas of your life and just help you everywhere. So these are critically, critically important drills. However, I wanna encourage you 
to relax and take it easy in the learning process. Work on only one at a time, work on a short period of time, and if you happen to mess up, don't get down on yourself. Understand that it's all a process and kind of take the positivity challenge with that as well. Find the positive in the sense that if I've been this successful at life doing what I'm doing and I'm working at this, imagine how good I'll be once I finally get there, okay? Do these drills, they're very important. They're the foundation, as is inner game, of everything we're gonna do.